my name is Mark Ellis from Stick and Roger Studios, and today we're going to go over the initial uh, Stream Deck support that we are putting into XKeypad 1.5.1. Uh, today, what I want to do is take you through some concepts, show you how to install uh, the Stream Deck uh, XKeypad plugin into your, X Stream your Stream Deck software, and uh, also walk you through how to do a configuration uh, for the uh, a Stream Deck XL. Um, and with that, let's uh, get right into it. So, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Stream Deck devices, uh, they are a set of uh, little tiny keyboards, and uh, they even have one that's got some encoders on it that have OLED uh, keys on them, which means that uh, you can put an image behind them and uh, and some text, uh, which make them uh, you know kind of very similar to what I would say with the X keypad virtual devices, except that rather than operating them on a touch panel, uh, you actually have a, a device uh, that's got some tactile feedback on it, like these Stream Deck devices. Uh, and here's a sample of some of the ones they've got. Um, you know, they have one for $149. Uh, they've got a, uh, just came out with the Stream Deck Plus, which has got the encoders on it for $200, and then the Stream Deck XL for $239. And you can even operate it on a mobile device. And I, I was a little bit confused on the pricing. It looks like it's a, a subscription service. But I've seen other people say that it's free, so you'd have to look into that to see, you know, if indeed uh, you have to pay for that to run uh, Stream Deck on a mobile device. So some concepts about the uh, Stream Deck support and X keypad because it's a little bit different than, um, you know, what you're probably familiar with with the uh, um, virtual devices and uh, PA engineering keyboards. Uh, first off, each key or encoder can be associated with an action. Uh, an action is, a, and you'll see this in a minute when I show it to you, an action is when you uh, take a particular Stream Deck plug-in action and you put it somewhere on a Stream Deck device. Uh, and you can organize these actions uh, for your keys, your encoders, by uh, either different profiles. Uh, they can go into different pages on the Stream Deck. They can even go into folders. Uh, so you're almost unlimited as to how many uh, keys and encoders you can have on the Stream Deck. Um, there may be a limit, but I'm not really sure what it is. But you can organize them many, many different ways. Uh, and uh, what the Stream Deck plugins do is they expand the functions available for an action. Uh, you know, by default with the Stream Deck, you have uh, built-in things you can do, like move back and forth between folders. You can do a a keystroke action, which kind of injects a keystroke into the operating system, a number of things that are kind of built into it. And what which plugins do, the Stream Deck plugins do, is they allow you to have a lot more actions that you can associate with a particular key. And uh, as you know, Keypad's going to offer uh, such a plugin that will interface to X-Plane 11 or 12 on Windows or OS X. At the moment, the Stream Deck SDK does not support Linux. So uh, we're unable to provide uh, support for the Stream Deck on a Linux operating system, but it works perfectly fine on Windows and OS X. So the X Keypad Stream Deck plugin, it acts as a bridge between the Stream Deck software and a running instance of X Keypad on X-Plane 11 or 12. Each key or encoder action uh, can then be bound to a key or an encoder definition in X Keypad. And this is very similar to what you've seen in... Um, you know, on the virtual devices or the PI engineering uh, keyboards. They're very, so configuring a Stream Deck configuration in X Keypad is very similar to doing it with an X Touch Mini configurator uh, or the virtual device configurator with some differences. Uh, key and encoder definition indexes are not directly associated with an action position on the, on the Stream Deck device. Uh, this is a this is an association that is done through the process of binding a key or an encoder definition to a Stream Deck action. This is a little different than what you had, you know, with the virtual device or the X Touch Mini. Each key definition position index, uh, like key zero or key one or key two, had a direct correlation to a position on the P engineering keyboard or the virtual device. What makes this different with the Stream Deck device is after you define all your key and encoder definitions, in other words, what you want done when that, when an action is activated or an encoder is uh, rotated to the right or to the left, um, you have to make an association between that definition and, and where you physically 
uh, put that action on the Stream Deck device. Uh, the key text and background image can be controlled in the key definition uh, on the Stream Deck device, but the font, font color, font size, and text alignment must be, be controlled on the uh, uh, Stream Deck software, and we'll see that in just a minute. Uh, you also cannot have multiple font colors and font sizes on a single action instance on the Stream Deck device. Uh, you could pick that font and you could pick the font color, but you cannot intermix colors, uh, you know, in different lines on that uh, on that key. So uh, that's sort of the concepts behind this. Why don't we dive right in and take a look at what it takes to install the Stream Deck, uh, the X Keypad Stream Deck plugin? Okay, so here we see the uh, Stream Deck software itself. And uh, what we need to do is install the plugin, um, the X Keypad plugin, into uh, the Stream Deck software so that the uh, X Keypad action will show up on this sidebar over here. So the way we're going to do that is we're first going to go to uh, Windows Explorer or the OSX Finder, and we're going to navigate to the Plugins folder in X Plane 11 or 12 and go to the X Keypad folder. In the X Keypad folder, you should find another folder called ST Plugin. And if we click on that, there's going to be two folders, OS X and Windows. Go to the one that's unique to your operating system. So I'm on Windows, so I'm going to go here. And here you're going to see the actual X Keypad plugin for a Stream Deck. And you're just going to right click on that, and you're going to do a um, open with. And for me, it's going to be the Stream Deck software that we're going to open it with. And you'll get this little dialog here saying, are you sure you want to install it because it got downloaded from the internet? As opposed to, ultimately, we'll actually have this in the Stream Deck uh, store. But until we get it all flushed out and we know it's working right, we're, we're just going to install it manually like this. And you just press Install. And if installed properly, you should see uh, the X keypad uh, action down here that you can then drag and drop up to uh, the specific positions as to where you want it. Now what I'm going to do here is I am going to create a new profile. You could put these all in your default profile, but I think what you're going to find out is, given that you may want to adjust your fonts, sizes, and, and, um, and things like that, maybe specifically by a specific plane, you may actually want to create profiles within the Stream Deck software um, that are associated with maybe a particular aircraft. I'm going to initially just do one for X-Plane. Uh, so we come in here, edit, uh, do a new profile. And I think I'm going to change the name of that. I'll just go to Edit Profiles. We'll right click on this, and I'm going to call this one X-Plane. And you'll see now that I have my Stream Deck XL uh, selected, and I've got my X-Plane um, profile selected. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some instances of keypad X keypad actions onto this uh, onto this X keypad profile on page one. So you just drag them and you plop them where you want them. And you can even do things like right click and copy it and then just paste like this. Wherever you're going to want to have a key on the device. So I think you get the general concept. Uh, wherever you're going to want to have a uh, action, uh, you're just going to need to drag this little X keypad definition over and dump it where you want it. And you could create extra pages here, like we'll add another page, and I could put um, you know, X keypad action on here if I wanted to. You know, such that if we go back and forth between pages, you would get it. Um, you'll also notice here that I think this is a navigation key that comes on by default uh, to go to the next page. We could do the same thing here. You see, as you add pages, you get go back a page, go forward to the next page, that type of thing. And those are going to be useful so you can quickly flip back and forth. Uh, between pages that may have, you know, many different uh, uh, keys for your uh, for your explain interaction on it. Okay, now that we've uh, got some of those on there, and we're going to add some more in a few minutes. But why don't we go ahead and get explain fired up, and let's take a look at what's involved with, um, you know, actually doing key definitions and binding these uh, 
these instances to the uh, the keypad uh, X keypad definition. Okay, so we've got X-Plane loaded here, and uh, now what we're going to do is bring up the Stream Deck uh, configuration uh, editor. And we come here to the Plugins menu, X-Keypad, and bring this up. Uh, now, by default, uh, the Stream Deck configurator is going to open up. If it doesn't see a configuration for this particular aircraft, it's going to go ahead and open up and create uh, one, def one device. And you can see here it's uh, you know named it the default device. I'm going to come in here and change this to uh, my SD XL. And the first thing we're going to want to do is make a hardware assignment. So if is if you look on my system, I've actually got a Stream Deck XL and I have a Stream Deck Plus. So I need to tell X Keypad which device this particular. Um, device that I created is associated with. So I'm just going to come down here and say this one's associated with the XL. Okay. Uh, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and we can do an, in, an import or an append. So I have a, a sample here that I've done that we can load up. It's got a bunch of generic uh, definitions for things like the lights and uh, the, the radios, transponder, some of the autopilot functions. So I'll come in here under Resource, Plugins, X Keypad, Samples, Stream Deck, and this is the one we want here. This uh, X Keypad SD Generic.json. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring that in. Um, and then if we go to Key Definitions, you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of definitions here. You know, Keypad 0, Keypad 1, these are the numeric keypads. You know, Keypad 4, 5. We can even look at them over here under the definition list. And here they all are, like uh, keypad zero, keypad minus, keypad clear. These are COM1 and COM2 radios, uh, the audio panel functions, transponder code and mode. You sort of get the idea, right? And what we're going to ultimately do is we're going to bind these to those instances we had over there on the uh, Stream Deck uh, software. So let's take a look at that binding, okay? Uh, if we come over here to bindings, We should see um, for each of these actions that I put over here on the device, we should see a corresponding um, entry over here on the bindings page. And all we're going to do is we're going to simply make an association. So uh, as an example, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to add a few more actions over here for where the keypad's going to be. Let me go ahead and do that now. I'll put one there. And if I press that key, on my device, you'll see that it highlights green over here. So I'm going to associate that with, uh, I believe that's going to be the decimal point. Okay. Let me see if I can actually make this a little smaller here. It might make it easier if we can have both of these up at the same time. Now, uh, what I'm going to want to do is this font's not very big, so with that highlighted, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to increase that font. I'm going to bring it all the way up to 18. Now, given that all these little keypad um, entries here, I'm going to want them all to be kind of the same size. So I'm just going to come over here and copy this. And I'm going to paste it into all the other places that we're going to need something. I'm actually going to want to have the the clear and the minus key over here. So we'll just do that like that. Now we just need to make those associations. So 
So we just come over here, we press a key on our Stream Deck device. So this is going to be the zero key. And I'll just come over here and, and do it like that. And you'll see that it shows up on your Stream Deck device. And we'll just go through and continue to, to do those. So this is going to be the one. Two. Three. And I think on the minus here, this is probably a little bit bigger than I need it to be. So I'm just going to drop this down a bit. Maybe more like that. <clears throat> and now, I think if we just go ahead and uh, try these, we should be able to type some numbers in here and they should show up in the clear key. Let's try this, like 121.6. That's a little big. I think I'm going to drop this guy down a bit too, a little bit too. I want to make sure I can put in a number big enough for like, uh, let's clear it. Let's put in something like 15,000 feet for the uh, autopilot. Oops. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now that we've got these on here, we can start adding some more. Okay. Uh, like as an example up here, <clears throat> this one I intended to be the COM1 key. So we'll just press it. Let's clear this out here so it's not in the way. And we'll set this to COM1. And you'll see that that's showing up now, like that. And then we could do this one to COM2. And I think you get the general idea. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to finish putting the rest of these on here. And just so we could see how these work, now that I've got them on there, I can go ahead and, uh, and notice that they're probably a little bit smaller than I like them to be. So let's come in here and bump these up. I think 11 is what looks good. And I can actually copy and paste these now, right? Like uh, when you copy and paste them from here, all you're really copying and pasting is the font and font size and how you want the alignment to be. The definition is going to stay bound over here. Let's just copy that. Paste. Oops. Copy. Paste. Paste. 
paste. And if this is all working right, I should be able to set um, set these. Like, like come in here and go to uh, 121.6 for COM1. And the way I have this key configured is if you press the the, the key without a number, but anything in the number buffer, it'll do basically do a, it should do a swap. Yeah, I've got the same thing in there, so if I do uh, uh, 125.95. I should be able to see it better, right? Now you can see it swapping back and forth. So that's the general concept uh, behind how you do this. And this UI here with these drop down lists, it's a little clunky. I'm going to change it to something like a drag and drop type functionality. Um, and I'll do that probably as soon as I get the encoders configured. I'll come up with a different way of allowing you to do these assignments because this using this drop down list is a little bit clunky. But you know, for now, you'll have to suffer with it until I can come up with a better way of doing it. But I do think you get the general idea of how this works. Uh, and let me go ahead and put the rest of them on here so you get a sense of what a configuration could look like. Okay, once you get this all done, don't forget to come up here and do a save. I don't have the auto save feature built into this yet. So, uh, you definitely don't want to uh, forget to save when you got things uh, working pretty well. But let's take a look at this. Uh, if we come in here, I think we can see this with the autopilot radios zoomed in. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and close this down because we don't need this at the moment. You'll see that we can change any of the radios, right? Like uh, if I want to change this to uh, 118.65. And then press it again and it swaps it in. Um, this is the audio monitor. Lebanon Muni Information Foxtrot. 1800 Zulu weather. Wind calm. So you get the idea how that works. Um, you've got your nav radios. Uh, and I see I made a mistake over here. I set this one to the nav uh, radio. That really should be set to um, the nav audio panel. So let's come in here and make that correction so you just see how that works. Go to the key bindings, press this key, and I don't want it to go to, uh, I want it to go to the uh, nav audio panel. Nav on audio. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to look. So again, save that again. Right? This is where you basically on your audio panel, you're turning on whether you're listening to the you know, the uh, Morse codes for those nav radios or whatever. Then we've got some autopilot functions that I put in here. You've got your transponder, like we can put in 5642 into the transponder. That's going to ident it if I press it there. I've got my transponder mode. As I press it, it'll go up and down through the various transponder modes. You know, uh, things like, again, this one I... Uh, if I want to change the course, I can come in here and put that in here, or the heading. Say, for instance, I want my heading to be, uh, you know, 125. You just press that in. Press heading. This is your autopilot heading mode. Altitude hold mode. Vertical speed mode. If you want a vertical speed of, let's say, uh, 1,200 feet per minute, I can just put that in there like this. So if you want to change your ASI around, just, you know, press that button there. You'll notice that this nav uh, mode key similar to what we did in the virtual device it shows you your nautical miles to that particular uh you know a uh, vor or if it happens to be on gps uh, it'll show you to the next gps waypoint that you've got put in um, i also put some on the other on the other page i come in and i put some taxi lights in or some lights on let's come over here to the lights and you can see that uh as so I click that, the taxi light will go on and off, and the image behind the key changes. So I think you get a sense of how this works. Um, this is pro very preliminary uh, stuff, so I'm sure you're going to find some bugs. And I'm probably going to change the UI around a little bit to make it a little bit easier to, um, to do those bindings. And I've also got to get all the encoders working on the Stream Deck Plus. I don't know if anybody's got that device or not. But by all means, give this a try. And, uh, you know, give me your feedback in the forums and we'll see if we can't make this work, uh, you know, as good as we possibly can. Thank you very much for watching.